Excellencies, Secretary General, Deputy Secretary General, it's good to be here with you in our UN headquarters speaking live to the world about this SDG moment. The 2030 Agenda is a universal agenda for humanity, guided by the vision, or as Ola said, our imagination of a sustainable and fair world. But change, as the animation lays out, has been too slow. And now COVID-19 has exposed the implications of tattered safety nets, gender inequalities, and disregard for our planet. The pandemic is a clear warning. Recovery from crisis cannot be driven by a zero-sum game of economy versus environment or health versus economy. Rather, this once-in-a-generation chance to set things straight. And I'm hopeful that this ambition will be met over the next 10 minutes, we will tell you a story of what it means to leave no one behind, to put the dignity of every person at the center of building just sustainable societies and economies. The pandemic is compressing the time it takes to make incredible progress in the face of terrible adversity. And it is shining a light on what has to be done. Together with my dear colleagues Pumzila and Inga, we will explore the courageous choices and policy innovations countries are making right now across the world to tackle the systemic challenges of poverty and inequality, gender inequality, and climate change. Advancing human development means creating opportunities for people through jobs and sustainable economies, but also eradicating the multiple dimensions of poverty and reducing inequality. To achieve this, social protection is an important investment, creating access for everyone to quality basic services, including universal health care. Before COVID, approximately 4 billion, yes, 4 billion people did not have access to social protection. Building people's resilience against vulnerability, risk and deprivation, and helping them to get on their feet if they falter, defines social protection in the 21st century. This is crucially important given the expected reversal in human development for this year. Consider Colombia. Over the last 20 years, Colombia implemented an integrated social protection system, and it has delivered one of the fastest reductions in multidimensional poverty in the world. When COVID-19 hit, Colombia nearly doubled the number of households receiving social protection benefits in a matter of months. They did so by harnessing the power of digital platforms and modernized financial regulations. The results are expected to mitigate an increase in poverty by almost five percentage points. Colombia is not alone in scaling up these innovations. Togo, for example, built a digital cash transfer program from scratch in just 10 days. It now serves 12% of the country's population. Pakistan expanded an existing social protection program by 16 million households, and it now benefits almost half of the country's population. Three things help drive action on social protection. First, go beyond income to understand who to target, to know who is suffering most or risks falling into poverty. Second, create fiscal space to invest in social protection. And as UNDP found, a six month temporary basic income would require only one third of what developing countries owe in external debt payments just in this year 2020. Creating fiscal space also means phasing out expenditures that no longer make sense, like fossil fuel subsidies, as my colleague Inga will speak to in a moment. And third, make digital the default. The pandemic has shown the power of digital solutions to scale quickly, but also the urgent need to close the digital divide that still affects half the world's population. From expanding social protection to upending gender social norms, as my colleague Pumzile will speak to next, social protection is an opportunity for generational change. Thank you. Thank 
Thank you, Akim. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the Beijing Platform for Action. As we celebrate this landmark agreement, COVID-19 threatens to undo the gains made on gender equality over the past 25 years. Women's economic security is in jeopardy. Gender poverty gaps are widening. Gender-based violence is resurgent and girls' education and maternal health are threatened. In 2021, it is expected there will be 118 women in poverty for every 100 poor men globally. And this could rise by 2030. This would be a stunning reversal for the SDGs. But this kind of backsliding is not a foregone conclusion. With bold policies to boost women's economic empowerment, we can shift costs and accelerate progress instead. Whether it is through policies to increase women's employment, including to support skills development and gender equality in science, technology, and innovation, services to support care to reduce women's load or to respond to violence, countries recognize women's potential and are showing the way. In 2015, Uruguay put in place a publicly financed comprehensive care system for children, the elderly, and people with disabilities. As a result, Uruguay is today one of the leading countries in childcare provision and employment rates for mothers. There are other examples. Georgia and South Africa are supporting women's businesses. Morocco is assisting women's cooperatives. Japan and Sweden have policies to promote equal pay. In Australia, the government is leading the way to boost women's equality in STEM. The UN system is taking these policy insights to support countries on similar pathways. Societies benefit when women can rise to opportunities. A profound transformation of economies is required for a just, sustainable future where women are at the centers. Countries need to invest in care services, education and skills that will be a backbone of the economies of the future. My colleague, Inga Anderson, will explore the climate action investments needed to transition from a grey to a green economy. Thank you, Pumzile, and thank you, Akim. Climate action will help achieve multiple goals across the 2030 future. The NDCs are at the very heart of translating climate ambition into action. As we mark five years on the 2030, we are contending with the warmest climate on Earth. We cannot afford to be powered by fossil fuels, which are the largest single contributors to climate change. We committed in place to limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees centigrade. But projections show that by 2030, we will produce 120% more fossil fuel. This dangerous path could see us double emissions by 2050. As countries construct, as countries construct the response plans, they cannot afford to take their eyes off the relationship between people and planet. As we phase out fossil fuels, we need clean and sustainable sources of energy. Renewable energy is part of the solution. And we are making progress around the world. South Africa invested $20 billion in renewable energy over the last eight years. Renewable energy creates jobs. It could create 42 million jobs by 2050 with higher gender parity as compared to traditional energy sectors. And nature's infrastructure holds answers too to sustainable, inclusive recovery that drives down poverty and upends gender inequalities. Consider the Sahel. Bordering the Sahara Desert, the Sahel is on the front lines of the climate crisis. The ambitious Great Green Wall 
a collaboration from Senegal to Djibouti, contributes to 15 of the 17 SDGs. It's restoring ecosystems, accelerating growth and jobs, and combating climate change. The Secretary General has set out six steps for climate action. We need to phase out fossil fuel subsidies, redirect finance from nature negative into nature positive flows, invest in renewables. And as we phase out fossil fuels, we need clean and sustainable sources of energy. We need to invest in nature. Excellencies, COVID-19 is a challenge of our lifetimes, but it is also an opportunity to correct conditions that brought us here. A green, inclusive recovery provides a policy space to make long overdue changes to our socioeconomic architecture and to rebalance our relationship with the environment. We must head off the long-term consequences of digital exclusion, including for the millions of children who are left without access to online education. We must offer decent jobs that also protect our natural assets, especially for our young people who will bear the burden or the fruit of the choices that we make today. We must rely on international cooperation and frameworks to steer our paths. And we must do whatever it takes to contain the virus without taking our eyes off the future we want. The world was ill-prepared to confront the devastating effects of COVID-19. We're not here today because of the virus. We're here in spite of it. Our choices matter. This is our decade of transformation. <laughs>